If you're a Power BI developer, there's one skill that you absolutely must learn. And if you don't know it, you could be making a big mistake. What's the big mistake? The big mistake most developers make is that when someone comes to you with a project, you give them exactly what they want. How is that a big mistake you say? The reason it's a mistake is because the number one skill you must master as a Power BI developer is how to deliver what someone needs, not what they want. Let me give you an example. Recently, a client came to me with a problem, a serious problem, a problem that could put them out of business. In fact, the same problem had put several of their competitors out of business already. So the stakes were extremely high. My client needed me to solve their problem, but they actually never told me about their problem. What they told me was they wanted a report, a report that showed whether the customers were paying on time. That's it. That's all they told me. Why didn't they tell me about their real problem? The truth is, this happens all the time. Someone comes to you with a problem. They tell you exactly what they want. But what they want isn't actually what they need. Sound crazy? Not really. Think about it. Imagine you're not feeling well. Maybe your stomach hurts, or your head, or your knee. You've researched your symptoms, you've tried some home remedies, but you're still in pain. So you make an appointment with your doctor. When you go to your doctor's appointment, do you tell the doctor what you need? Of course not. You don't know what you need. You don't know what's wrong. All you know is you're in pain. That's why you're at the doctor. Now, just flip the rules around. As a Power BI developer, imagine you're the doctor. Someone comes to you. Maybe it's your boss, or maybe it's a client of yours. They come to you with a problem and they want your help. That person is the patient. In fact, the doctor-patient analogy is so fitting that in the world of business, this person's problem is called a pain point. The person comes to you with their pain point and they want you to solve it. Now here's the key. Would a doctor just give the patient something to make the pain go away, then send them home? Absolutely not. The first thing a doctor would do is ask questions. The doctor's job is to find out the real problem, the underlying issue that's causing the person's pain. It's the same with Power BI. When someone comes to you with a problem they want you to solve with Power BI, you need to start by asking questions. Back to my client's story. A client told me they wanted a report showing whether their customers were paying on time. But as we've already said, what someone says they want and what they actually need are almost always two different things. So just like the doctor, I started asking questions. Now, you don't want to ask just random questions. Your job is to ask the right questions. And most of the time, to be able to ask the right questions, you need to have some kind of an understanding of the business. This is called domain knowledge. For example, if your project involves financials for retail business, it's important to understand something about retail. If it involves production for a manufacturing company, you should have at least a basic grasp on the manufacturing industry. Usually it takes time to acquire that kind of knowledge. But what if you don't have that knowledge? In just a minute, I'm going to share a technique that will help you ask the right questions, even if you have zero domain knowledge. But before we get to that, in the case of my client, I had worked with them for several years already. So I had acquired a fair amount of domain knowledge. And I knew that in their type of business, cash flow is critically important. Failure to manage cash flow could literally put my client out of business. That's exactly what happened to several of their competitors. So what my client said they wanted was a report showing whether customers were paying on time. But I knew that what they really needed was a way to ensure consistent cash flow. Nobody needs just a report. What they need is something that will address the real problem. And for my client, the real problem was managing cash flow. Now, what if you find yourself in an area where you have no domain knowledge whatsoever? What do you do then? I'm going to show you a technique that will help you ask the right questions even if you have zero domain knowledge. In fact, this technique is so powerful that you can use it to find out what someone really needs in almost any situation. The best part of all, this technique consists of just two simple responses. Whenever someone asks you to do a project, don't just say, okay, or will do, or you got it boss. That's not how you want to respond. It's nearly impossible to deliver real value with a project if you take someone's request at face value. Remember, your goal with Power BI is to deliver what someone truly needs, not just be a yes man or a yes woman. So when my client asked me to deliver a report that showed which customers are paying on time and which were paying late, I didn't just agree to it. I started asking questions. Ultimately, you want to find out the why behind the project. And that why is almost never at the surface level. But don't just ask why. That can come across as an interrogation. You need to be a little diplomatic. Let's assume for a moment that I started with zero domain knowledge, that I didn't know anything about how critical managing cash flow was to the business. How would I have responded to my client's requests? Let's walk through it. My client comes to me and asks me for a report showing whether customers are paying on time. I say, a report that shows whether customers are paying on time. Sure, let me check and see if I have access to the data first. And if I do, I can start on it this week. Is there anything else? So the first response is just to ask, is there anything else? 
My client replies, Joanne from accounting wants to see how customers are paying over the past 30, 60, and 90 days. Bingo. Just by asking one simple question, now we have new information. What do we learn? First, we learn that Joanne from accounting will be using the report. That's gold. Now during development, when we have questions, we can go right to the source. We also learn there are three periods Joanne is most interested in, 30, 60, and 90 days. That gives us a baseline for how to present the data. Now here's the key. Whenever you get new information, don't stop there. So right after hearing the new information, I'd say, ah, I see, over the past 30, 60, and 90 days. Tell me more about that. And that's the second response. Tell me more. My client says, that's all. Joanne just wants to know if customers are getting better or worse, so collections can stay on top of late payers. Notice something here. Even though the person said that's all, we learned two more extremely valuable pieces of information. First, we found out it's important to Joanne whether a customer is trending in a good or bad direction with making payments. Second, we know that the end goal is for collections to get after customers who pay late. We're starting to get the picture that there's some real urgency from my client to minimize late payments from customers. So even without the domain knowledge that managing cash flow is absolutely critical to my client's business, we can at least conclude that cash flow is an issue. As you can see, using those two simple responses gave us some very important additional information. Now that we've taken some time to digest the information we got from our initial conversation, the next thing we do is set up a meeting with Joanne. In that meeting, the first thing I do is share with Joanne everything I know so far. Then I'd ask the question, is there anything else? Joanne says, Dan has regular meetings with the customers and he wants to see a report before the meeting. Usually I find out the day before. I reply, oh wow, the day before. That sounds like a tight deadline. Tell me more about that. What is Dan looking for? Again, remember you always want to follow up new information with the tell me more response. Joanne says, he needs to know whether we want to do more business with the customer or less business or end the customer relationship altogether if they're consistently delinquent. I say, ah, I get it. Makes sense. Is there anything else? Joanne says, sometimes a customer is late over the past couple of months, but if they've been a good customer for the past 10 years, Dan's not usually as worried about it. The goal is to ping pong back and forth between these two responses until you've learned everything you can and the person has no more information to give. Here again, using those two simple responses gave us a ton of new information. First, we know that Joanne is responsible for getting data to Dan. Dan's the account manager. And we learned that Dan needs to evaluate whether to do more or less business with the customer based on their payment performance. But here, rather than just looking at the last 30, 60, and 90 days, he needs to take into account the entire payment history of the customer. Using this approach gave us very specific information it's going to help us to create a report that will be an important tool for my client to use to manage their cash flow. And in this next video, I show you exactly how I took all the needs we've identified in this video to create a report to help my client manage their cash flow issues. I'll see you over there. Hey!